hi folks welcome back i hope you're all doing well so if you've seen some of the recent videos on this channel you'll know that i've been trying to learn a bit more about language models and especially how to evaluate them how to measure how good they are at various tasks so today i'm gonna do something different i'm gonna actually cover two papers and these two papers illustrate two very different approaches to setting up benchmarks and quantifying and evaluating the performance of large language models. One of them takes a somewhat maximalist approach and another one goes the other way, tries to take a more minimalist approach. So let's look at the maximalist approach, which is this paper we're looking at right now. And what the authors are doing here is that they construct a benchmark or a test with lots of different tasks or questions which cover a broad variety of topics everything from maths to history computer science law and so on and this is really testing both the knowledge the general knowledge about the world of this model as well as its problem solving ability now at the outset i should point out that the authors are not really trying to evaluate natural language generation tasks. This is the kind of stuff that has generated a lot of excitement around GPT-3 because people have used it to generate prose. But they're looking at much narrower tasks here. Before we get into the results, let's look at some examples of the kinds of questions they're asking in this benchmark. So here you see one related to microeconomics. There's some college physics. There's some complex numbers there's some questions related to medicine so really it's trying to cover a very broad variety of subject matter note that these are multiple choice questions so random chance would give you about a 25 percent score and here you can see a summary of how various large language models have performed on this test you can see that the gpt3 model barely does better than random chance the unified qa model does a bit better than random chance and the gpt3 extra large model also does better than random chance you can also see in this table over here the red line denotes random chance that the performance across topics is quite lopsided. There are some topics on which these models do fairly well, much, much better than random chance. And then there are other topics where it's just as good as random chance. So what does this show us? These results are telling us that these large language models aren't that much better than just random chance at a wide variety of questions about the world in general. And the authors here are trying to quantify that and point out where the weak spots are and hoping that this will guide future research on how to make these models perform better on these kinds of questions. Now let's switch over to the other paper. It has a cool title, Elementary, because it takes a much more minimalist approach. The philosophy of the authors in this paper is that the benchmarks themselves are becoming larger and more complex as the models are becoming larger. And they are hoping to avoid this, as they call it, arms race, by coming up with a much smaller set of questions, a much smaller set of tasks that they hope will still shed important light on the performance and strengths and weaknesses of a model. So this approach is very much in contrast to the first paper we saw, which tries to take a much broader and wider and somewhat maximalist approach. Again, before we get into the results, let's look at the kinds of tasks that are part of this benchmark. And you'll see that they're fairly simple tasks. Constructing a sentence containing a word or a sentence not containing a word. Asking about words containing a letter or asking about words associated with a category. Providing some words and asking which one is the first alphabetically. As you can see, these are fairly simple elementary tasks. And that is by intention. The guidelines for creating these tasks explicitly have these principles, such as the tasks being easily solvable by an elementary school student or allowing for quick automatic evaluation. They should be short and they should measure a specific aspect in isolation. So they shouldn't try to combine more than one performance goal into one task or question. On each of these tasks, they also tweak them a little bit 
and try to measure what they call robustness so for example you could change the order of arguments like the order of words in the question or you could keep the task the same but change the content in the question you could change the words that the task is asking about and this table summarizes the scores you can see that even the largest gpt3 model with 175 billion parameters only scores about 30 percent with an accuracy of 38 and robustness of about 80 percent the da vinci model does much better now one important result the authors found was that instruction fine-tuning gives you much more of a boost than simply scaling up the model with more parameters so in this graph you can see the comparison between gpt3 and instruct gpt and what they have found that if you scale up gpt3 25x in number of parameters that gives you less of a bump in accuracy than fine-tuning the smaller model on a smaller corpus of instructions so what does this tell us this is a really simple benchmark it consists of very simple tasks elementary school level tasks and they find that even the largest models underperform humans significantly on these trivial tasks and moreover even changing the tasks which they try to measure as robustness makes the performance very brittle and so the authors achieved what they set out to do which was to show that you don't need a large complex and broad benchmark to be able to find the strengths and weaknesses of these large language models you can actually find that out with a much smaller benchmark consisting of much simpler tasks and of course we've seen all the the demos and chat gpt and so on and there are a lot of very complex tasks that these large language models have been really performing well at but all the same they're not doing so well at these really simple tasks and the authors are hoping that with this benchmark future research can address that as they say make the model walk before it runs so i hope you enjoyed a look at those two papers and i will see you next time thank you very much <laughs>